And for more on this, we are now being joined by Mr. Jayant Krishna, who's a senior fellow at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. As a welcome to World Business Watch. How do you assess India's economic outlook post at these elections? So, uh, Shivam, you know, uh, I mean, there are three scenarios. Uh, mm -hmm. One is that BJP uh, wins on its own. It has its simple majority. Mm -hmm. Other is that uh, NDA has a simple majority. Mm -hmm. uh, and third, of course, the uh, India Alliance uh, wins and, and, and you know, they run the government, you know, uh, kind of a thing. But, you know, as we all know, the... Uh, you know, uh, all all uh, uh, political pundits are talking about uh, you know uh, BJP winning uh, most probably on their own itself, and and if that happens, there'll be a policy uh, continuity uh, for sure. Uh, and uh, last few years, I think uh, it is quite appreciable the way uh, BJP led government has maintained certain uh, phys fiscal uh, prudence, you know, and the fiscal deficit has been uh, uh, largely contained. Uh, so I think that would continue. That's something very good. Uh, I think uh, where uh, in last 10 years and especially last five years, BJP has done very well is uh, BJP led government. I mean, you know, they have done very well that uh, there's been a huge amount of infrastructure push, which would continue a uh, huge uh, leverage of digitization process in the country would continue. That's good. Uh, disinvestment uh, should also continue or perhaps get intensified, but that would depend whether BJP uh, comes to power on, on its own or they need other allies uh, to have the majority. Uh, so I think that could uh, shift here. You know. uh, some of the trade deals yeah. with major countries like UK and EU, EU and, and some of the trade irritants between UK, you are between US and India. Mm. I think those uh, uh, sh uh, should also get uh, sorted and PLI, which is currently in 14 sectors has mm. led to, uh, you know, a, a thrust in industrialization and also uh, uh, FDI, uh, which has uh, gone up. So I think these are all these, 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 all these things should uh, continue. If BJP comes to power, uh, uh, you know, uh, post elections, uh, Mr. Krishna, now you've given us a like a long term outlook to this after the elections, what happens in the next term? I wanted to get your opinion in the short term as well. You know, the elections are spanning across April, May and first June is when it finally ends. That's the seventh phase. I wanted to understand from you with the election spanning several phases, what challenges do businesses face in terms of uncertainty and how can they adapt their strategies accordingly? Of course, as far as the uncertainty is concerned, it will perhaps be in the southern states. But how do you feel businesses are going to be responding to it? So, uh, Shivan, I mean, uh, I, I have a feeling, you know, both uh, having seen the US India, uh, you know, business uh, landscape uh, very well, as well as UK India, at least these two. You know, I think businesses uh, all over the world, they expect, uh, you know, some kind of a regulatory uh, certainty in the country. That's very important. And and therefore, uh, uh, you know, they while they make investment, they do not want the rules of the game to change uh, midway because that, that doesn't form a level uh, playing field. Uh, and also in India, there has been a huge compliance burden uh, of various laws, of various uh, rules and so on and so forth. I think to BJP's credit in the last few years, you know, they have... Uh, uh, decriminalized almost 3,600 uh, compliances and, uh, you know, almost 40, 41,000 uh, compliances have been reduced to improve the ease of doing business. So I think people would expect that to continue and, and business, uh, you know, in general would expect uh, regulatory certainty to continue or policy continuity uh, to happen. But at the same time, some of the more, uh, uh, you know, uh, irritants, uh, you know, like uh, Uniform Civil Code, which mm. has been on BJP's agenda, mm. the land acquisition bill, the modified one or the amendment or a new bill, whichever way they want to take it, mm -hmm. and intensifying disinvestment. I think this would largely depend on whether BJP comes to power. They have a majority of, of their own mm. or they have to use other NDA uh, uh, allies, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to have majority in Lok Sabha. So I think, uh, I think that's very important. Yes. Uh, to my mind, uh, Shivan, uh, you know, the... Uh, some of the riskier, uh, you know, investments, especially from an FDI uh, perspective, mm. uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the businesses all over the world may like to hold that uh, mm. if, if uh, uh, you know, the, uh, suppose, uh, for example, if Modi wins, it's fine. If mm -hmm. uh, uh, Congress led uh, India Alliance comes to power, uh, it would also be fine because let's not forget Congress is the one who in 1991, you know, brought the, the, the most uh, important economic reforms in the yes. country. So that would continue. But if there is a regional party led India Alliance uh, victory, mm. you know, that would be unstable and, and very, very and even, you know, they, they may resort to some of the populist measures right. and that may throw the fiscal prudence out of gear. So I think these kind of challenges businesses have 
and i'm i'm sure you know they will they will some of the investments may get slow down if uh, the current government yeah. does not come back to power Mr. otherwise Krishna. it will be business yes to um, my mind oh uh, you spoke about investments that's where i want to get your thoughts next india has seen a significant inflow of foreign funds in the build up of elections there have been a lot of investments here as well how do you see this investors confidence just before the elections at the moment so that's very encouraging actually if you study uh, various uh, governments and the five year tenure that they have had in india typically in the last year you know the fdi slows down it slows down because uh, because of a political uncertainty and business wants to have a wait and watch kind of an approach mm -hmm. but but I, i think last one year if you look at fdi is uh, stood at around almost, almost 17.96 billion mm -hmm. which is very very encouraging but uh, an area of concern to me is that uh, a, a very substantive part almost 26% of the last uh, one year uh, financial year fdi uh, because march is almost ending uh, mm. has come from mauritius and 23% from singapore mm. so i think uh, you know some of these investments remain suspect and how many of them actually materialize you know those kind of issues are always there right. us has been 9 uh, 9% netherlands almost 7% japan mm. 6% So I think uh, that's good, and some of the sectors where uh, this FDI has come, mm. which has got intensified in the last few months, uh, has been uh, services, of course, which includes BFSI, uh, uh, you know, and 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 computers, both not just the software but hardware as well. Mm -hmm. uh, trading uh, FDI has gone up, uh, telecom, auto. So I think these are these are all uh, good stories, mm. and uh, uh, you know, I I think one reason why FDI has. has uh, has been galloping in the last few months is mm -hmm. because businesses around the world they feel that uh, you know uh, modi is going to come back to power mm -hmm. and bjp will resume, resume power they'll get their third term and and the kind of uh, uh, continuity in terms of policy as well as uh, regulation would continue yes. so that gives the business uh, a comfort uh, and because of which you are seeing a, a spurt in fdi in the last few uh, uh, months you know and full year as well you know all right that was Mr Jayant Krishna senior fellow center for strategic and international studies joining us right here on World Business Watch sir thank you so much for your time pleasure